Hello guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're actually going to be looking at Caspercoin and the blockchain trilemma. So firstly, I'm going to cover what a blockchain trilemma is and we're going to see how Casper solves the blockchain trilemma and I'm going to provide some information and kind of prove it, I guess. So firstly, the blockchain trilemma. So normally to be a cryptocurrency, it needs to be decentralized, scalable and secure. So normally a cryptocurrency will take two of these and it will lack on another one. For example, you could have scalability and security. However, the decentralization could lack. For example, Bitcoin has decentralization and security. However, the scalability lacks for the network just because it can't do transactions per second at high throughput. So therefore, the scalability is not there to scale the network. Now, this can be fixed by layer ones and layer twos on top of it. However, you'd want a cryptocurrency that has it all put into one coin and one chain. So there we have Casper. Now, I also want to mention that Casper is not the only one that has the facilities to actually solve the trilemma problem. However, I'm just making this video to provide knowledge on Casper coin mainly. So there are other cryptocurrencies out there that have the potential to solve it, but I'm going to be making my video on Casper coin. So you might see that coins that are staking coins normally say that they've solved the trilemma problem. However, the staking of coins also leads to centralization instead of decentralization. Because if you had a bunch of money, you could run a bunch of nodes and then you'd have more power on the network and then you could centralize the network. The same thing can happen with proof of work for miners. However, it costs way more to actually centralize the network for miners than it would be for staking because you don't have to invest into hardware and facilities to set up the miners. So the decentralization on proof of work is easier than it is on staking. So solving the trilemma problem. So here we have Casper and it talks about a bunch of things like ghost tag and stuff like that, but it doesn't actually mention in any of this anything about Dagnite or the Rust rewrite. So we're gonna be looking into that. So firstly, I wanna focus on decentralization. So what does that mean? Well, decentralization is the nodes and the miners across the world. So as I said, with staking, you could buy up a bunch of nodes and have power over the network or control over a network if you had enough nodes. However, with proof of work, you can spread it out more because you have miners. So here are all the active nodes that you can see on the Casper FYI. I'll leave links to all of these in the description below. However, these are only the public nodes. So these are ones that would be for mining pools and stuff like that. So there could be private ones as well out there. However, every miner that solo mines can act as a validator. If you're mining into a pool, you still validate, but you're validating as one machine, if that makes sense. So here we have all the nodes. Obviously, we can see the decentralization of all of these nodes around the world. And these are only the public ones and not the private ones. And to look a bit more into that, we can see that out of the 999 last blocks, we can see that 52% of it or 52.9% of it is unknown nodes. So these would all be pools that you can mine to. And more than half of the hash rate on the Casper network is in private nodes that people would be mining to. So if you didn't know when you're mining, you can just set up your own node and mine to it if you have the information and if you have the technology wise to actually set it up yourself. So you don't need to actually rely on a pool if you don't want to. And to also further this decentralization, we have the blocks per second on the network, which will also kind of roll into the speed of the network. However, blocks per second, if you have more blocks per second, it means that more miners could find more blocks and therefore you could decentralize with solo miners way more. So the more blocks, the less it would take to solo mine, if that makes sense. And also when the Rust rewrite comes in, it will go from one blocks per second all the way up to 32 blocks per second, which makes solo mining and further decentralization of those miners way more by a factor of 32 effectively but it's obviously not going to be like that that's just in a theory world so as we're talking about transactions per second let's move on to the scalability or normally called speed so the casper network currently operates at one blocks per second and we can see this in the casper graph inspector so these are real updated times for blocks on the network as you can see that had actually five blocks in one second and then we're seeing one block there one block there, one block there, but it averages out to one blocks per second on the network. As I said, with the Rust rewrite that's coming in, we could see up to four blocks per second. I believe that they're testing on four blocks and then they're going to move to eight and then they're going to up it until they find something that's both decentralized and secure for the network. 
So here we have a picture of the potential of rust on Casper. So I'm just going to give you a kind of brief comparison. Right here we're just having around two, three, four blocks in a line and when we look at rust on Casper, so all the blocks in red are ones that would be taken out. However, all the blocks in blue would still be counted. So you have here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it could already do ten blocks per second. The rest of them are actually just invalid blocks. So that's the potential that Casper has. It can go up to that amount of blocks and then that adds to the speed of the network and the transactions per second. Now I believe that every block is going to have 200 transactions contained in it. So if you up the block rate, that means that you'll get more transactions per second. I believe it could come up to around 2,400 transactions per second. So you could have blocks that only contained one transaction. And that means even if you up the block rate, you'd have to have a massive amount of blocks to confirm confirmations on the network. However, with Casper, they have a high block rate plus high transactions on the block. So this adds to the speed slash scalability of the network. So we talked a bit about speed and now when we're talking about Rust as well for the scalability aspect of it, Casper is going to be able to scale up to 32 blocks per second. But they have said in some of the literature that it could be 100 blocks per second at some point in the future when they implement Dagnite. So whilst they have Rust, which will actually up the blocks per second, they also need something that will secure the network to allow for these high block rates. Because it could get out of hand really quickly on the network if you're having a lot of blocks and a lot of them become invalid. So the transactions aren't going through and it opens you up for attacks if the latency on the network drops. And this is where Dagnite comes in. So Casper is currently operating on Ghost Dag. And I'm just letting you know we're moving into the security end of the triangle here. But Dagnite is the new consensus protocol that achieves responsiveness and it reacts to the actual network delay, unlike every other coin, including our current Ghost Dag protocol. So what does it mean by network delay? Well, when attackers are coming onto the network, the easiest way that they can attack a network is when you delay it. If a network delays, it takes less hash rate on a proof of work cryptocurrency to take over the network. Say it delays by 10 milliseconds, instead of the one millisecond that it currently operates at, then you would only need a smaller percentage of the hash rate to take over the network. If you go down here, this results in a cryptocurrency that is supported by a 51% security, has a high number of minor slash nodes, and has throughput in the order of one blocks per second. It's unlike existing cryptocurrencies, which inevitably trade off having a small number of validator nodes or lower BFT security. So normally we're talking about this trade off, Cryptocurrencies will lower their security in hopes of adding to further decentralization and speed on the network. However, in Dagnite, it says here, it requires less confirmations to be provably secure. The intrinsic scale as internet speeds increase, basically as the internet gets faster over the next decades with more fiber optic cables, Casper will scale with this. Without any hard fork interventions, this will make our coin literally the ultimate layer one proof of work coin in existence. Put into Dagnite as well is a scalability aspect. So all these things that I'm saying about Casper coin all kind of tie into the same thing in terms of the blockchain trilemma. You can't actually point to one thing and say that that's security or that's scalability or that's decentralization. For example, Dagnite is helping towards first the security and then speed. As the internet gets faster over time, it can react quicker on the network and therefore you could add more blocks on the network. So this is all done in hopes of further decentralization, further scalability and further security on the network. So right here we actually have a quick overview of the Casper network right here. In real time it's doing 2.2 transactions per second and 1.6 blocks per second. As you see and it's in real time so it's going to be changing all the time. So you can check this and when the Rust update comes in, you can actually check on this website to see how the blocks per second are looking on the network and how much transactions per second there are on the network. If you've ever used Casper, you know it's very, very quick to go from one wallet to another. Even if you're moving onto exchanges which need confirmation times, you could have a hundred confirmations in a hundred seconds basically. Now the only problem that we have with decentralization right now is obviously ASICs on the network. So we're having this transition period where it's only GPU miners right now and nobody has ASICs as of yet. 
However, if an ASIC farm could get a hold of a load of ASICs before anybody else, they could effectively have over 51% of the network hash rate. Now, ASICs, when everyone has them, is harder to attack a network because there's so much hash rate spread out. However, from the transition from GPUs to ASICs could be where Casper could fail if it was in the hands of the wrong people, let's say. That's the only thing that could stop Casper from solving the trilemma problem and could not help Casper in the future if it got into the wrong hands. If, say, a bunch of Bitmain KS3s got into the wrong hands of people before anybody else, like let's say, for example, Ice River, they made a bunch of KS1s and KS2s. If they put them onto the network, they could effectively control the Casper network because everyone else is working with GPUs and FPGAs and they could control a large amount, over 51% of the hash rate. And then lastly, I want to mention about block DAG. So obviously this is the blockchain trilemma problem and clearly block DAG is not having the same sort of trilemma, I guess, in a sense. So it is solving this trilemma problem, but it's also a different type of technology. Blockchains and block DAGs are similar. However, block DAG, I think, is going to be maybe a future technology which a lot of people adopt into their cryptocurrencies because they're seeing the success that Casper has right now. I know there are a few out there that have block DAGs integrated into their coins. So maybe we could see a switch from blockchains over to more secure, scalable and decentralized block DAGs in the future. So that's how going forward Casper is going to solve the blockchain trilemma problem. I think they've basically nearly already got it there. However, with subsequent updates like Rust, Dagnite and just ASICs coming on the network, we could see further security, further decentralization and further scalability on the network. If I've missed anything out that you guys think should be important, please leave them in the comments below and I'll reply to them. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this.